All right. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we're a little bit late in starting because we were just live in Katrina's group. <laughs> we we talked a lot. So uh, <laughs> it was a good topic. <laughs> we, will, we have a lot to say about stress. <laughs> so, uh, but it's OK. Um, I think I, there are some new people that joined the group. So if you're watching us for the first time, my name is Renee Roberts. I am the, the admin of this group and uh, I'm founder of Nourish to Live RX. And then we have Katrina here, who is the other half of our Women of Wellness. Uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, a little project that we're doing together. So uh, Katrina is also a uh, health and life coach like me. So, um, and she runs her own group and we've been going live. So we are here today to talk about stress and you know different types of stressors and what it does to your body and uh, controlled versus uncontrolled stress. So I'll get right into it. I'll do a little bit of talking and then I'm gonna pass it over to Katrina, but Katrina, just chime in. Um, if you have any comments about what I'm gonna talk about, I'll, I'll start off. Um, the reason why is because I've been knee deep in this. As you guys know, I will be going live tomorrow night in this group to talk about more about stress and do my stress busters workshop with you guys. So I'm pulling some little tidbits out of that uh, workshop and bringing you some some here today. But um, I think everybody knows what stress is. We don't really need to know the definition, but you know, it's it's basically um, it's how we feel, but it's more than just an emotion. It's actually, you know, it's hardwired into, you know, into a physical response that travels throughout our entire body. Um, and, you know, stress can be good and it can be bad. And but when it's bad, it can make us physically sick. So I do want to talk a little bit about good stress versus bad stress, because, you know, back in the day we needed stress, you know, uh, we needed it. You know, you, you've heard about the flight or fight response. Um, we needed that back in the day when we were being chased around by tigers and woolly mammoths and whatever. And, you know, our bodies don't know the difference between a woolly mammoth and a work deadline. So whatever happens, you know, our bodies react to that. So, but on the good side, stress can be good. It, there's a positive response and there's a negative response. So when stress is good, it, insp it inspires us, it motivates us, it energizes us. Um, it keeps us focused. It keeps us alert. It, you know, it allows us to explore the edges of our comfort zone and we learn, uh, from being stressed and we grow from it. We get stronger, but if we have too much of it, we get the bad stress. It can weaken us. It can demoralize us or distract us. And, um, you know, that's when our cortisol, you know, going through the roof and our adrenaline is rushing and, you know, we can even have, you know, gain fat and lose muscle and it affects our blood sugar, our immunity, our metabolisms. It can even affect our, it obviously affect our sleep. I'm a sleep coach. I know this. Um, it can also affect our sex hormones as well. So it can do all sorts of things to our bodies. Um, the key is to actually kind of find that sweet spot. You know, if you're, if you're lethargic and bored and unfocused, then your stress level is probably a little too low. But if you're anxious and, you know, obsessed and depressed and stuck or numb, then your stress level is too high. But if you're energized and engaged and interested, then you're at your sweet spot. So that's what you, you know, you kind of want to get to um, because that's what helps motivate you and get stuff done, right? So I'm curious, you know, if you're watching this on the replay or if you're watching now, type in some things, you know, what are your top two to three stressors? Do you know what they are? Because a lot of times they're hidden and you may not even know that it's stressing you out or it's a stressor. So um, there's lots of different things um, that can make you stressed. So I don't know, Katrina, what do you think? Um, what are some of your stressors? <laughs> <laughs> Let's chime in. Let's have Katrina chime in. <laughs> well, okay. So, and I, I specialize in burnout and, uh, and I think, um, you know, with, with hitting burnout, it's chronic stress. It's when the stress doesn't stop. And sometimes you're not aware, just like Renee said, sometimes you're not aware that you are stressed and what are the physical signs and the emotional sides of, of being stressed out, you know, and that is that, you know, inability to sleep. Um, I know when I get super stressed out, I go numb. Like I just, I stop caring. It's not that I'm depressed. Uh, I just give up, you know, I'm just like, meh, 
like, I'm not happy. I'm not sad. I, I numb out, you know? So mm-hmm. that would definitely be something like a, a reaction that I have. So, um, stress can stem from emotional exhaustion. So whatever is picking at your emotions and it could be lack of sleep, it could be your kids, your spouse, your job, you know, your weight, how you feel inside your body. Any of these things will start picking at how you feel on a day-to-day basis. And so how you feel leads to that emotional exhaustion. And when you are hitting emotional exhaustion, it leads to big emotions. And when we have those big emotions, this is where, you know, stress, we, we will use it in the positive or negative and stress can be good or bad. And it's bad when you get stuck in that tunnel of that big emotion. So if you're super overwhelmed and you're like, I, I feel like I'm, you know, treading of water here and the water level is here, you know, those are these big emotions that we need to, we need something to guide us to get through that tunnel. We need something that's going to give us that life jacket to lift us up above the water so that we can breathe again. So what's that going to be? What do you do to complete this stress cycle? And so we were talking about that, you know, um, just half an hour ago, (laughs) there's many different ways that you can complete that stress cycle that you can, uh, start to move yourself through the tunnel. And so, I mean, the obvious ones are movement, crying, laughing, talking with someone, affection. There's the um, 30 second hug and a six second kiss. Um, and I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. So if you do the 30 second hug, it's not, a, it's not just, okay, come here and embrace me for 30 seconds. It's you, you actually want to stand with your feet hip width apart so that you're experiencing your own center of gravity. And then you're going to reach to your other person. Your other person is going to stand with this center of gravity as well. So that both of you are in your own stance, but you're having that embrace. And from that embrace, you have a magnetic soul link and you have like a, an energy connection where you are actually receiving energy from this person and vice versa, which can help to lower your cortisol levels. We can help to lower your stress mood and kind of balance you back out. So there's the, the 30 second hug, which I'm sure you can do with, you know, whom you trust and the six second kiss. Well, that wants to be with, you know, you want to do that with someone that you really <laughs> trust, right? <laughs> I'm not talking about tongue. I'm just saying a six. Sounds like kiss. no makeout session. It's not a makeout yeah. session. Is this, isn't, <laughs> this isn't grabby, grabby and all over the place. It's just, it's an, it's another embrace, but a six second kiss is awkwardly long, but it's long enough for you to breathe through this kiss. And as soon as you breathe, you relax because you are then transferring again. It's another magnetic. Did you know that our heart has its own magnetic field? And that's why everyone's like, love, 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 be love. You know, love is everything. Oh my God, it's a little overkill, but there's truth to it because our heart has its own magnetic force. And so when you, and sometimes it's hard to activate that by ourselves to be like, okay, connect to myself, you know, like, and I'm not mocking people that can meditate. Okay. I'm just being a little jerky right now, but, uh, because meditation doesn't always work for me and that's where I'm coming from. Okay. I, sometimes I try to meditate and I just can't (laughs) do it. And some people can drop into their heart space and I freaking admire you. You are on a pedestal and I wish I could do that. So that's why I'm just kind of poking fun at it because I have a really hard time getting there. So the 30 second hug or the six second kiss, and, and talking about the magnetic field that is around your heart that is what will help you to have that energy shift, changing your vibrations to lower your cortisol, to reduce your shoulders and to start breathing regularly. And even if your mind and you're still worried and you still want to talk about the stress, your body has now had a physical reaction to lowering the stress level. And that's what I am trying to get at, but back to moving through the big emotions. So when you're stuck in a tunnel, if you're stuck in a tunnel of emotion, a a tunnel of stress. And did you know that like statistically the most people that experience stress are caregivers. So, uh, caregivers by the means of like nurses or personal support workers, health coaches, healers, uh, parents, if you're caring for elderly parents, if you're, you know, looking after somebody who's immunocompromised, especially right now with COVID, you know, if you got to go over and shovel mom and dad's driveway, Like, so that, that actually adds more stress on you. 
And it's the caregivers that get stuck in this. We get stuck in those emotions. I say we, because it, me too. <laughs> so you get stuck in these tunnels, you know, and you, you don't have anything to move you through. So when you are having these big emotions, you need to find that thing, that guide that's going to move you through that tunnel to get to the other side. So different ways to move you through the tunnel. When we talk about those big emotions, sometimes you want another big emotion to push you through. And Renee was just sharing her, sharing example. her example. So why don't you go ahead and share your example of your oh. big emotion that you had that helped move you through? Yeah, my big, my Tupperware stomp. Again, I know my sister's in this group. So Debbie, you'll hear this story. And she laughs every time I do it or talk about it. But, and my family doesn't let me live it down. But it was, it was one of those things where I was just vibrating up here. I was under a lot of stress for some reason or another. I can't even remember why I was stressed, but I was, obviously. I walk into the kitchen and, you know, everybody's got that Tupperware cabinet, that place that you throw all the plastic stuff. And it's never nice in there. It's like you just throw it in, right? Because you can't deal with it because it's always going all over the place. Well, you know, I tried to pull something out. The entire cupboard came out, like every piece in that cupboard came out onto the floor and it was a disaster. It, I had a lot. <laughs> It was, that was it. That's the straw that broke the camel's back. That's when I lost it. And I had, you know, my sister was there, my husband was there. And, you know, I, it just, I think they didn't know what was going on because I was just throwing shit and stumping, stomping on plastic and just breaking. St I just needed that release. And that poor Tupperware got the brunt of it. But to this day, I don't live it down because, you know, it was just some weird emotion that came out of me. I didn't, it was uncontrolled. It was a big emotion that I had to just, I had to release. And that's how it happened. But so that's perfect though, because it was stomping, you were angry and you were completing that stress cycle. And so, so movement is number one, you know, getting it out through movement. And if you are, are like, okay, I don't want to exercise, but that was a beautiful, I love that example because you're not like, I was so stressed out and I went for a 20 minute run. And then I was like, okay, now I feel way better. You're like, no, man, I was in the moment. I was super pissed off and I stopped and I threw, and I just, you know, had an adult temper tantrum and I got it out and more and more people need to realize, I'm not saying you should go around and have a temper tantrum every time you're pissed off, but you need to do something to move through that tunnel. Otherwise, it's just going to cause you, you know, you, you've heard, you know, I'm just going to shove it down and shove it down and shove it down. Guess what? You're going to explode. And it might be diarrhea or it might be verbally. So. Yes, <laughs> yes that's true. <laughs> so. Another, another way to move through these big emotions too. I'm going to use this, you know, like we're going to rewind to like being a teenager. Okay. Because these are, these are huge feelings. All right. Let's talk about the first time you fall in love. The first time you're like, or that you have a crush and you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like, whoa. And you are just, you know what I'm saying? Like your heart has a magnetic field. Well, all you do is you think about them. You dream about them. You want their sweater to sleep in, you know? And so you have these big emotions and then you use, you use like a playlist. You start listening to the songs in the radio and you're like, oh my God, that makes me think of him or her. And, you know, you create this love playlist and everything is in rose colored glasses. And so that music that happy, that joy is moving you through this crush tunnel, this lust tunnel to possibly love, or, oh my God, what was I thinking? <laughs> you know, but the same with grief or sadness, say you break up or you lose someone and they, they pass away. So you're, you're left with this huge grief. You're left with these big emotions of sadness and hurt and frustration and anger. Like all of those can be all in one tunnel, especially when we're talking about grief. So something to help you move through would be a playlist, listening to those songs that remind you of them, allowing yourself to cry, paint it out, dance it out, cry it out, do whatever you need to do to release it. Because sometimes, you know, just maybe talking about it isn't enough. You know, uh, my mom lost her husband four years ago now. And she's like, I've seen so many counselors and I've talked and talked and talked and talked and I'm still not, you know, like it still was inside her. So, okay, well, we have to look at something else then, you know, what else can we, we use to get you through this tunnel of grief? I mean, it's a long tunnel and sometimes yeah. you just have to be prepared to go through it. Yeah. But that brings up a good point that not everybody is going to have the same tool set and the same tool set won't work for everybody, I guess is what exactly. I'm saying. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
So you need to find your tool set. And sometimes it, it does change over time, but generally you will have some standbys that will always work for you. But it also depends, like you said, on the on the type of stress that you have. If it's like a big thing, like somebody dying, you know, that, you know, some things may not work. Some of your tried and true little tools may not work for that such of a big emotion. Because it's such but, a big emotion. Yeah. 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 But there are luckily there are so many things that you can try. There's tons of of ways you can, you know, you can handle it. It's just the, you know, trying to find the best that works for you. One of the best things that I've done and I always recommend is journaling, like journal the experience and what you're going through, because then it gives you, it gives you um, your history. It gives you, you know, your documenting, you know, what's worked and what hasn't worked and what you learned from that experience. Just that physical act of writing it down really helps as well. So yeah, for sure. But there's tons of things that you can do. And our, we talk, you know, we talk about meditation and the deep breathing, you know, turning your parasympathetic nervous system on. Um, I talk about tremoring. So tremoring you can do, you can watch TV, but you put your body into a position. Um, maybe I'll send Renee the link so you can link it, or maybe I'll link it under this live. i will be like, Oh wait, I'm in this group, <laughs> but tremoring is, um, putting your body into a position where you're kind of in butterfly and then you lift your bum and what happens, you're, you know, your legs are, are out, like your thighs are out. You all know what butterfly is, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if you leave it and you lift your bum up and you, you let your legs go out and you have to hold it long enough, but the more and more you do it, you'll get into a tremor a lot faster. And so what this does is you'll start to tremor. Your legs will start to shake uncontrollably. It'll start with your legs, but you, you know, and, and sometimes people will stop it because I've done this exercise many times with various clients and they stop it because, oh my God, I started to tremor and then they freeze up. But the goal is to let the tremors come and just let your body start to shake. And it will actually come all the way up your spinal cord. And now we're talking to your nervous system. And now we're starting to release the locked emotions, we're starting to open up the energy meridians and the vibrations inside your body. So tremoring is freaking amazing. You can also do this as a squat, you know, like, um, a squat at, against the wall, a wall squat. So you got to go past the burn. <laughs> okay. So getting into that wall squat, go past the burn. You can like wiggle your legs out, you know, make sure that your shoulders, you can wiggle them out, press them against the, the wall but then your legs will start to, to tremor. They'll start to, they, they go a little bit more burn and then they start to shake. And then eventually wow. you fall, which is fine, but tremoring, you don't have to pay attention to what you're thinking. You're allowing your body to release the locked yeah. emotion. And that, and that totally makes sense because if you're trying to hit your nervous system, that's what's causing a lot of the physical sensations in your body when you are stressed. The, your nervous yeah. system, it will, will give yeah. you the tense muscles, the sore muscles. If you get that, when you're, when you're stressed, it'll cause issues with your digestive system. So it's really good. I can totally see that working with stress. And if, if you can't, if you are like, no, I don't want to do that. Um, then just tensing and releasing tensing and, and doing one of those meditate, like starting with your toes and coming all the way up, tensing and releasing, tensing, release. So that will yeah. help too, which yeah. is another way yeah. of releasing that stress. And I know we've, yeah. we've talked about laughing and crying and yeah. Yeah. And you know, there's like, and you know, the one thing though, that I, I don't think we mentioned yet is that there's, you know, there's some, there's a difference between someone who can handle stress and then someone who can't, and it's, it has nothing to do with the external stressor it has everything to do with what's going on in your head. You have to be able to accept that it's happening and know that many times you can't control it. So you need to let it go. So it's all in how you respond to the specific stressor as well. And that, that really makes a big difference. And a lot of the exercises that we give for handling stress helps build your internal mindset as well as also helping out in the moment. But yoga, meditation, deep breathing, all that stuff is good for just balancing your inner self, I guess, lack of a better word, right? to help you manage external forces. The dialogue that goes on inside your head is so key when yep. you're facing a shit storm, you know, if yep. something's coming on unexpectedly and you're stuck dealing with something, what you are saying in your head is like that positive yep. reinforcement, that positive self-talk 
Um, and, and there's a difference between, you know, your pessimist and your optimist and, uh, and your true colors are going to come through when you are faced with adversity, you know, in uncontrolled stress <laughs> and something that kind of pops up. So that's it's how exactly. you're, how you're coping with it and how you're dealing with it. And, and that self-talk is huge. And so that's something yeah. that coaches can help you with is, is readdressing, reframing, you know, how you speak to yourself, um, yeah, which will help exactly. you deal with stress a lot better. Yeah. And that's true. You know, you, you, um, you kind of touched on it. Your coping skills are very important. Also the type of environment you're in, you know, cause you can be, you can be a person that is more stress sensitive and it can be, it can be about your environment. Are you in a soothing environment or are you in one of those go, go, go environment all the time? Or are you optimistic or pessimistic? Are you in a, do you have support? Are you isolated? Like things like that will really affect as well, you know, how you handle stress. So it is, you know, it's one thing to say I'm stressed and here, here are some tools I can try or tools you can try, but it's more or less, it's a little bit deeper than that because you want to be able to, to make it. So when you have a, come across a stressor again, you handle it better. And each time you handle it better and better. So you're building that, I guess, stress resistance. I don't know what you want to call it, but yeah, if you get to the point where you can, and I, I've lived it, I know, and people have told me from me back in the day to me today, I'm very different with regarding stress and handling stress because I used to not be able to handle stress at all. I used to be so like, and I was a pessimistic person and I, I, you know, I just didn't handle stress well. And I think I mentioned this in our chat in your group is that I always lived in my head. I don't do that anymore. It's like, you know, it is what it is. There's a reason why this happened. <laughs> Was that your dog? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> my okay. kids, my kids are home from school. Oh, okay. So they can just hear so, them. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. Is there anything else we wanted to say um, about stress? Um, because I was I was just going to talk really quickly on oh. controlled versus uncontrolled stress. Yes, we stress. didn't do that. Yes, do that. Yeah. Do that. So, um, so the controlled part is like pre-planning, you know, prep, planning, plan, problem solving. So the example I give for that is my mother, <laughs> because my mom has something called a magic bag, AKA her purse. Okay. So if you go out with my mom anywhere, uh, and something happens, oh my God, this woman has everything. Advil, Rolaids, uh, shopping bags, tweezers, ja uh, jackknife, um, uh, Swiss army knife, <laughs> like lip gloss, chocolate, everything is in this purse. And it's really like, it's a short little fat purse, but oh my God, she's, she has everything inside this purse. So that is planned problem solving. Okay. So, and I mean, if anyone makes lists and if you have calendars and if you're organized and you're setting yourself up for success and you kind of are planning, you know, like I always tell the girls, like I have females, you know, I'm like, okay, you have to have like your little emergency kit inside your backpack that nobody can see. Okay. So make sure that you are prepared in case something happens unplanned. Right. So I'm not talking about pregnancy. Oh. <laughs> so that is your controlled stress. You know, you're just making sure that you're setting yourself up for success, right? We're taking care of this uncontrolled stress is when shit hits the fan and there's nothing you can do about it. Right. So again, that positive self-talk. And I use the example of going grocery shopping on a Saturday. You know, okay, so on a normal day to get to the grocery store, I'm going to get in my car. It's going to take me 50 minutes. I'm going to drive, you know, get a parking spot and go right and get my groceries and come home. But on a Saturday, there's going to be traffic. There's going to be lineups. There's going to be old people walking 10, you know, <laughs> 10 steps slower than you in your way. And that's when I'm like, okay, I want my megaphone. And I need like pills of patience you know, to take because, oh my gosh, some days, right? So when you're dealing with this uncontrolled stress, or, you know, even if you're dealing with like a jerk from work, A, you know that you're having to deal with this. So that positive self-talk comes in, right? So I have questions that you want to ask yourself. Ideally, when you have to do something, and this uncontrolled factors start coming in. What is the goal? All right. So you want to ask yourself, what is the goal? I'm like, my goal is to get groceries on Saturday. Okay. I know it's going to get hard. 
So how am I going to handle the hard? I'm going to set myself up for success. I know there's going to be lineups. I know there's going to be traffic. I know there's going to be slow people. So I'm going to allot myself, you know, maybe two hours instead of one hour to get my groceries. I'm going to be aware this is going to happen. And I'm not going to get pissy when I have to deal with the lineup. Number three, is the outcome worth it? Do I really need groceries today? Or can I wait until Monday when the stores aren't so busy? So if I'm out of toilet paper, which like, okay, seriously never happens. But if I ran out of toilet paper, then yes, I, the outcome is worth going to get <laughs> the groceries on a Saturday. Uh, and then ultimately, you know, if I'm like, oh, but I, it, you know, it snowed and we've got like 30 centimeters of snow out there. Like, do I really want to dig up the car, warm it up, drive all the way in, deal with like the blizzard to get the bloody toilet paper? Or can I just open up the Kleenex boxes? You know, so I'm going to go over the pros and cons of grocery shopping on a Saturday. Is it worth it for me to go? So if you're dealing with work, let's say that you hate your job and every day you're dragging your ass into work and you just, you despise it. Okay. Now, why do you despise it? Is it the job or is it a person, you know, or are you just sick of, of doing this? You know, what, what is the reason, but you want to ask yourself, what is the goal? The goal of going to work is to get a paycheck so that I can provide for my family so that I can pay my bills and feed myself, right? So what is the goal of the job? Number two, you know, it's going to get hard. So how are you going to handle the hard? Is this the hard or are you like burnt out? Is this just, are you having a day or are you having a month or, you know, like what is, what is really going on? So this is where you have to dig a little bit deeper. Is the outcome worth it? Is it worth it for me to go to this job today or should I just call in sick? You know, am I just in a miserable mental state and I need just a, a mental health day or is this happening every single day? Or do I, you know, can I go to work and can I like put on my playlist and get in a good groove and then get to work and be like, all right, like bang on. And then you end up having an amazing day. Or do we really need to look at the pros and cons of this job? What are the pros and cons to staying at the job? What are the pros and cons to leaving the job? And sometimes you really have to get to the point of whatever your stressor is. I use grocery shopping or a shitty job. You might just have to say, okay, enough is enough. And when do you get to that point? When do you get to that is enough enough? You know, am I really done? And only really you can answer that. And that's okay though. That's okay to say I'm done. And then you start looking for another job. Or you talk about going on stress leave and then you look for another job while you're on stress leave mm -hmm. or whatever, exactly. whatever is out there for you. So those are the differences between controlled and uncontrolled. Yeah. Cool. And the thing is you don't have to do it alone. I mean, that's like the biggest thing, get help, right? If you need, you know, talk to somebody, talk to a friend, family, coworker, whatever coach, you know, that's, you know, that's what you can do. Don't try to handle it all alone because it just makes you even more stressed, I find, right? Because you're already in that altered state of mind that you may not be making the best decisions. Like, do you want to quit your job? Maybe you should <laughs> right. yeah. talk to somebody and, 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 and do the pros and cons with somebody that's, you know, in a better state of mind. So yeah, um, that's awesome. So on that note, um, you know, Katrina and I are doing the laser coaching sessions. So I just wanted to throw that out there. If you guys are interested, it's 90 minutes, $125. Um, we can help you with any issues you have, um, whether it be stress or not. And you walk away with a blueprint, um, and an action plan from us. And, uh, yeah. And you get two of us for the price of one, I guess that <laughs> you get to go into a zoom room with us and, we're a lot of fun, I think. I think so. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, just reach out to us, either one of us, um, if you want more information on that. And also, um, just to, you know, just remember, I'm going live here tomorrow night. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about stress. And next week, we are coming back live at you uh, and talk about heart health. So stay tuned. I'll put the schedule. I can't remember exactly what day we're doing different days and times. So I can't remember yeah. when the next Me one either. is, but, but it's yeah. out there somewhere. 
it is out there. We'll <laughs> make sure. Week. Yeah. Make sure I post it. So you guys know, but uh, let us know um, what, you know, if you have any questions or comments, love to hear what your stressors are. Let us know if you're watching the replay. So we know you've seen it. That would be awesome. And yeah, uh, we will let you get back to your day. So have Bye. a great day. <laughs> Bye.